Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper in Charlton, Massachusetts, and I'm going to do a little bit more uh, TIG welding with the pulse. This past weekend, I did a lot of experimentation, and I came up with a, a couple new ideas. And uh, what I have here is the 060 aluminum butt welded joint. And I've tacked it already. I've showed the tack tacking process in uh, previous videos, so we don't have to show that again. And um, I did that now. I prefer not to use the pulse on the tacking. The pulse works okay, but non-pulse seems to work a little bit better. So I've got this all tacked up nice. And uh, now I've got the pulse set. I had it previously set at, I believe, two and a half. I brought it down to one and made, it makes a major, major difference, both on steel and aluminum. So I'm going to do a steel and aluminum butt weld. We're starting off with the aluminum and uh, we're not going to add any rod. This is a sheared joint so it's super tight and uh, you can add rod to it but if you're going to add you're going to have to do a little bit of grinding. On the steel I found that it was better to add a little rod because uh, you end up getting some undercuts when you do just the fusion. But I was able to get really good results with the fusion on aluminum with this new pulse setting. I increased the high frequency a little bit too and gave it a little more uh, post flow. So let's take a look at this now, watch the process. Uh, what I really like about this pulse is that uh, it makes the welding process almost a no-brainer. It's a lot simpler. Uh, and and the, the one pulse per second, uh, it slows the process down just enough, even if you're feeding rod, it, it just gives you a little hesitation time so that you can, can do what you need to do. So my panel here is on this piece of angle iron. It's rocking a little bit. Uh, let me see if I can straighten that up because that's that's a problem. All right, these are the new settings: 60 amps, and then for the uh, pulse time on 50, pulse amps 35, and this is the new key: pulse frequency one, one one per second, and then cleaning we got 30, and then I I bumped up the AC frequency to 200. And I increased the post flow to uh, 8 seconds, pre flow to 1 second, and back to 60. So those are the relevant uh, settings. Alright, so I'm going to weld the top first, and then I'm going to run the back with the pulse also. Uh, I'm running 50% helium and 50% argon. That makes a difference too. It makes this butt welding of aluminum sheet a no-brainer. Every time the results are perfect. I mean it looks good and the weld joint is as strong as the parent metal. So here we go. Hang on. So you can see the process there now, that's a beautiful looking fusion and I'll weld the rest of it off, off camera until we get over here we'll get back on camera so we'll make the video a little bit shorter. And then we're going to do the back side and we'll only show a little bit of the back side too but then we'll show the results. So there's the results. Super uniform. Looks beautiful. 
Now we'll do the back side. This is raised up, it's like a roof peak now. That's because the panels were flat and it'll tend to do that. If it was a compound curve panel, you won't get that problem so much. So there's our back side done. Looks beautiful. Front side, beautiful. It's nice and full. It flew. It uh, fell through on the on the front side. We don't have a big heavy buildup on the edges. So we're going to cool this down, and then we're going to hammer it. I'll do some of it with just a hammer and dolly, so that you can see that you don't need a power hammer or anything. Just a hammer and dolly will work it fine. So let me cool it and then we'll go to the hammer and dolly. So we had a clamp to the bench, we cooled it off, and we're going to knock this down a little bit. You can see that it's very malleable and uh, that weld will settle in really nicely. So we'll hit it a little bit on the back side here. All right, the rest of it we're going to hammer in the power hammer and it just crushes it down pretty fast. We'll give it a light grind and then we'll do the torture test on it. So I'm going to go power hammer it. You don't have to see that. You've seen it before in some of the other videos. And um, then I might even just wheel it a little bit. I'll grind it. I'll show a little bit of that. And then we'll do the torture test. All right, so there's the panel, both sides. I should have marked which side was the top and which was the bottom. They both equally look really good. There's a few little uh, edges showing here. This is where, um, where the edge of the weld is still got a tiny little bit of depression. That'll sand out. We're going to sand that just a little bit. I usually use the 50 grit, but this one I think I can get away with just the, the little 2 inch rotary grinder with the foam pad on it to clean those up. If I don't clean those up, those will be fatigue points when I do the torture test. So I'll clean those up and um, that weld looks really, really good. All right, now here's the panel with the uh, one, I used an 80 grit, I believe, on the two inch foam pad. Both sides are absolutely perfect. There's no blemishes, there's no nothing. Looks really good. Well, right here there's a tiny little bit of edge of the uh, the weld still showing. So now I'm going to throw it in the English wheel. I'll wheel it a little bit and then we'll do the torture test.
even that just a little bit shining it up. Now let's bring it over to the beta bag and we'll give it the torture test. So I've been using this ball peen. But I made this. This is uh, actually a Walmart hammer. I spent three hours grinding it to make it uh, like a uh, traditional bossing steel hammer. And we're going to use that. So here we go. It takes a beating and stays together. Yeah, John Cameron Swayze used to have a Timex ad. It takes a, a licking and keeps ticking. Timex uh, watches. This is, it takes a beating and stays together. So here's our results. And I could do this a hundred times in a row and get the same result every time. And what I've discovered is if I do it with just straight argon, I might not get the results perfect every, every single time. If I do it without pulse, I might not get the same results every time. So i become a very strong advocate of the pulse, which all the new inverter welders have. The new inverter welders, the prices come down quite a bit on them. So the affordability argument is no longer very relevant. Uh, some people have mentioned that you have to have an acetylene outfit in your shop if you've been doing work on any type of metal work, and that's true. But uh, this is so much easier for the beginner to learn. Uh, it, when that pulse on, it is a no-brainer. All you have to do is have the eyesight and the hand coordination and it just takes care of itself. Just make sure you've got the tungsten at the right spot and away you go. I mean the results just speak for themselves. Both backside and front side are beautiful. No rod. Now this requires a really tight joint which takes a little time to engineer but if you have a, a joint that has a gap you're going to add a little rod to it you will get the exact same results. Well you're going to have to do a little grinding if you add a little rod. So that's it today from Ray at Pro Shaper. Hope you learned something. Thank you.